uh, we were doing differential amplifier and we have already looked into the uh, large signal analysis and now today we shall see some of the uh, active loads, different kinds of load which DFAM can be, uh, can have and how we calculate the difference gain and the common mode gain. So the first one which I am going to calculate is a normal active mode in which M3, M4 are in saturation by force that the gates of both are N channel but as I said they can also be P channels. Uh, for this differential amplifier which I just showed with a active mode, okay. uh, the equivalent circuit you can start looking from that circuit again. Uh, if you have the figure please keep this figure up so that you know what I am saying. I am referring to this figure okay and uh, there are M1, M2 are the drivers in which inputs received, M3, M4 acts like loads and M5 is the current source okay. Okay, so with this uh, for this amplifier uh, and since we said the difference mode is always used that VGS1 is minus VGS2 which is equal to VID by 2 each of them plus VID by 2 at VN1 and minus VID at VN2. So difference is VID by 2 minus of minus VID by 2 means VID. So essentially the difference can be divided half on the input 1 and minus half on the input 2 so that the difference signal remains VID. Okay. So if I do that uh, from the gate side if you see at the gate side uh, there is a VID by 2 signal which is going to be your VGS1. This is my source of the uh, actually it is source for both M2, M1 and M2. Uh, one can see from here the source one can keep seeing here this is your source and down there is a transistor M5 which is your ISS current source and it has a resistance of RO5, it has an output resistance of RO5. Now if this is your RO5 which is going to the ground and each signal is also provided to the ground. Please remember signals are from VID by 2 to is taken positive and ground, ground is the second terminal. So this is your second terminal. For VGS2 the signals are minus VID by 2 therefore it is in the opposite sign signs plus minus. This is plus minus, this is plus minus okay and this source then is a common for both M1 and M2 and by simple thinking it is the, at the drain side you are GM1 VGS1, GM2 VGS2 shunted by RO1 and RO2 is that clear? This is same two circuits together I am putting in one way because source is common so I am going together on the both circuits. Then for the VGS3 and VGS4 please remember this is something interesting this transistors are connected at the outputs here VO1 and VO2. So this is your VO1 and this is your VO2. So it a, a transistor in saturation will receive some signal you can see from where since there is a potential going to be here and this is going to be grounded. So there is a VGS available for both the signal as if it is going for both N3 and M4 is that point clear if there is a potential here they act like a VGS for M3 and M4 okay. So those signals if you look at it can be represented as GM3 VGS3, GM4 VGS4 shunted by their resistance RO3, RO4. But the interesting part is this potential across since please remember this gate is common to both and going to the ground. The potential here essentially is VGS3 and VO2 is VGS4. This is drains, these are drains of M3 and M4, okay. Since this potential is VGS3 because you are connecting gate to the drain, okay, okay. So this is again VGS3 which is also VO1. This is drain, this is drain. Since the potential across is gate and drains are common, the potential VO1 is same as potential VGS3, same way VGS3 is VO2. 
So what does that mean? This is equivalent of what? If the potential drop across a current source is the same potential, then what is the equivalence of that? There is a resistance there of what value? 1 upon gm3 and 1 upon gm4. Please remember this is a simple circuit theory. If the potential is vgs3 and the current source is vgs and current source is gm vgs, it has a resistance of 1 upon gm as straight as that. So if I use this equivalence, also I, I do some interesting things. You can see since VGS2 and VGS1 are in opposite sense, okay, minus VGS2 is going to come. The current through RO5 is in opposite sense. If this goes like this, essentially the VGS2 because of minus, one current goes like this, the other current comes like this. Is that point clear? VGS2 is minus VGS1, yes. So this current is going through this in this direction, this is minus. So as if the current is coming out of this on the RO5, generally GMs are equal. VGS1s are smaller, okay, very small value. They may not be exactly same, but maybe because VGS1 is minus VGS2, this current sources are equal if GMs are equal. So what does mean how much current is really flowing in RO5? 0, is that point clear? If GMs are equal and VGS1 is v minus VGS2, current through RO5 is 0 and this fact I will use everywhere now, okay. If this is grounded physically by us and no current flows through is what is the condition for the source? It is equally grounded. Please remember AC ground and do not connect it to DC ground. This is an equivalent of an AC ground. Assumption is GM1s are same as GM2 and other signals are opposite sense. Then automatically we say there is hardly any current in RO5 and since there is hardly any current in RO5, this potential is same as this potential. Is that No current means the potential here and the potential here must be same otherwise current will flow. Is that correct? If we say no current, the potential at the two ends of RO5 must be same, no current. Is that clear? This current goes through this direction in RO5. This is minus sign. So this current comes out of this. And if GMs are equal and VGS1 is E VGS2 by magnitude, the two currents are cancelling in RO5. So there is no current in RO5 equivalently saying of course GMs are different they will flow but otherwise and even if they are different they are very small difference will come okay. So practically what we say drop across this is very small because very little current can flow or zero current can flow. So this potential must be same as this potential. This is what AC currents are, AC drops are minus VGS2 is that clear that is why it is minus now. Is that that condition is for difference mode signal amplifier we are looking for VDDs. Is that clear? So essentially it is a difference mode amplifier the currents will be in opposite sense. Is that correct? So if I use this theory which I did here then I have a very simple circuit which is what the circuit analysis people do. They just forget about RO5 put your source of this transistors as to the ground okay we have removed ro5 from here equivalently saying this is ground this is gm vrd by 2 gm vrd by 2 this is ro1 ro2 1 upon gm3 1 upon gm4 ro3 and ro4 do you see two circuits actually they need not have been drawn one over the other this is independent circuit and this is independent circuit in between there is a ground just to save space I showed you one ground, this one, the one, the opposite one. Is that clear? These are two independent circuits. Is that correct? The VO1 and VO2 are independently seen by us. Is that correct? Since the source is common, I am using common line here, one on the up, this side and one on the other side. So this, this is drain, this is drain. Please remember these are drains of both the transistors. Outputs of M1 and M2. Okay. Now if that is so, this is a parallel combination of RO1, 1 upon GM3, RO3. This is a parallel combination of RO2, parallel 1 upon GM4, parallel RO4. So same thing I just want to show. This two circuit can be as if independently shown to you because this is source which is grounded. 
range of yeah essentially we are saying same okay. essentially so that is the source of n channel but which is connected to the same terminal okay and therefore we say they are they commonly called drain of m1 and m2 okay this is drain of m1 and this is drain of m2 but we have put the sign opposite now current source ye idhar ja raha hai ye idhar ja raha hai na okay okay yeah that's right if it then i will write minus you are right but here i did do that is that clear i did this same thing here yeah it is going to the drain this is coming from drain to the ground this opposite sign has been taken care okay opposite sign so if i have now these two circuits what do i calculate vo1 and vo2 how much is vo1 quickly say me minus gm times this load and this is plus gm times this load this is plus sign is this way this is plus gm times this load is the output minus gm times this load is the output is vo1 is that clear so if i calculate both of these which i did you solve yourself again this is only to show you how to solve circuits so the gain of first you go vid by 2 plus is vo1 by vid gm1 by so much similarly so if i write this expression solve it is minus gm1 upon 2 plus gm3 plus go1 plus go3 why i put g because 1 upon r plus 1 upon r plus gm you have to invert it again so if expression becomes long enough so many times add conductances if they are in parallel is that point clear whenever conductance uh, you have parallel things you can convert them into their gs and add them out essentially when you want to know r you will have to do one upon again okay but this is much easier to do conductances okay so avd1 okay oh sorry by two, oh no two i have taken uh, care through this i think okay just keep whether it is so similarly i can calculate avd2 that is vo2 and i calculate the trick about this game is if gm3 is much smaller than gos will it be right to say so transconductance of an amplifier will be the order of 10 to power minus 2 or minus 3 amps per volt okay whereas what will be the order of conductance is minus 6 or minus even higher okay tens mega ohms or 1 mega ohm to tens of mega ohms so when i shunt a smaller resistance by larger larger can be neglected so roughly one can say that's why i say roughly it is root gm3 if i substitute gm in this formula at iss by 2 at iss by 2 all that i'm going to get is ratio gain is w1 by w3 is that correct w1 by w3 similarly i get this yeah 2 will come because this 2 is appearing here okay i should have put 2 here sorry but that is same that will anyway difference it will get added what we are you are saying is right vid is vid by 2 minus of minus vid by 2 so if i calculate for this they will sum in the difference so vid will anyway come when i actually sub add the two gains 2 by 2 but same for the other one also so by when i take the sum of this vid by 2 minus vid by 2 will be get subtracted out anyway to get you vid is that correct so if i get avd what is the when i sum this two i get vid uh, avd is w1 by w3 what does that mean what is the advantage or disadvantage i see in this expression the difference gain does not have any quantity which is dependent on what only the size of the transistor but nothing else no vt no beta and dash it is independent of transistor parameter except size except size is that correct it is independent of everything else now not even iss okay not even iss so essentially this means that i can fix the difference gain by what should i do in this figure i should adjust the size 
of m1 m2 with reference to m3 m4 the ratio of these why i am setting on i didn't take lengths because lengths in all transistors will be identical unless said otherwise lengths of all transistors will be the smallest channel length available to you is that correct all integrated circuits in analog uses common channel lengths for all the transistors so is in digital channel lengths are never changed okay because if you increase channel length what will happen in digital or even here the time taken for an electron to go from source to drain will increase or decrease increase because the channel length is higher so what does it mean in time term or frequency term it will slow down the circuit so at no time the channel lengths will be actually reduced uh, increased however if you recollect back i say lambda is somewhere related to this and if i want lambda to be small what I, what do i gain if lambda is smaller r zeros are higher so what do they what i am now trying to tell you they are used longer channel lengths okay if you want output resistance to be higher but if you want larger gains you better use larger bits is that issue coming to some way gm r0 term is now hitting opposite way increase gm increase size increase r0 decrease increase lengths okay this means there is some optimal will appear is that word clear to you gm will go proportion to root w r0 will go 1 upon l okay now essentially if i increase w your yeah, gm will increase okay or w by l essentially if i increase i will increase gm but if i increase lengths i will improve r0 okay gm r0 is essentially some way intrinsic gains so iska kya matlab hai ek badhaoge to dusra down hoga so there is some maximum minimum will occur okay u turn thoda badhega fir niche aa jayega so can't have longer length can't have smaller much smaller lengths you will have to adjust many times so the idea is in digital circuit so is in analog don't change lengths often use common lengths for everyone and what is the available length of device the channel length given by technology people let's say it is 0.25 micron process the channel length is 0.25 micron so use everywhere same lengths is that clear this is a sacrosanct number channel length use everywhere else same else so when i divide w by l by w1 by l1 upon w2 by l2 l1 l2 are same so it is only ratio of sizes okay but remember it is w by l ratio i am taking lengths being same i am cancelling lengths essentially it is the size ratio w by l of the one by w by l of the other is that correct but lengths being same we only say width ratio is that clear this fact is understood by all analog designers or digital designer when they go on the chip because that's the way everything should be uniformly kept on a board you cannot do anything like this why the circuit uh, devices will be given by someone else they may have anything we don't know so we just go by and connect and hope for the best so no integrated circuit equivalence can be created by breadboards is that point clear to you because discrete devices are never identical is that clear to you discrete devices are never identical so what is the experiment i suggested you in the lab to do that they are they look like ic there is a array array of transistors you use in which transistors are most likely to be identical and then you can make a defam through that array is that correct otherwise no way you can actually create an equivalent circuit equivalent i see in a discrete okay so what does that what is that trick i am trying to say so do, don't make a op amp out of discrete components it will never give a good gains or good bandwidths okay however which amplifiers can be used with single discrete transistors the normal amplifier common source common whatever transistors you have you can always use them as a normal gain stage gain stage wherever you need but if you want a defam or you want to have an op amp at no time try components discreetly and connect okay however as i said you yeah and if you pick up array of chip which has a more transistors you can pick up inside that there will be pins which will be available for each source drain gate for each of them okay if there are array of four there will be 12 pins 
plus VDD pins plus many other things. So if you use that then you can make a OPAM. So try it if you can get in our lab but that is okay. At least you have seen that commonality of transistor param parameters are guaranteed to some extent if it is on an array otherwise take one transistor discrete put here on the breadboard this will never have any gains available is that because of the mismatches it will have okay. So this fact has to be understood that why I keep links constants everywhere because all ICs will have common links okay. We never change that unless of course as I say I am looking for a buffer stage in which I want really R0 to be of particular value then I may tailor it for that specific particular device okay that is called tailoring and that time this is difficult to tailor because it is an extra mask as we say and if you do extra masking that means please remember in circuit I do not know I, you have not been told any technology uh, we go through around 20 odd mask steps as we call patterning okay. Each mask patterning step cost you around a million dollars plus okay. So if you add one mask additionally for doing one separate process for one transistor then you are almost asking me to do additional money on the same chip 1 million dollars okay. Of course number of chips will come out of the paper but it will cost very increase per mask and therefore in integrated circuit you are avoiding extra mask okay. But if you need it yeah it is possible okay. okay. Uh, so having shown you the gains the output resistance how much is the output resistance of a DFAM? How much is RO1? The GM3 plus GO1 plus G, please remember how do I look at RO1? At this end, how many resistances I will see? RO of this, RO of this plus 1 upon GM of this, okay. Three resistances in parallel or con three conductances in series. GM3 plus GO1 plus GO3 which is roughly equal to GM1 upon GM3 by same argument RO2 is 1 upon GM4, GO2 plus GO4 which is GM4 and the ROD is essentially called sum of the RO1 plus RO2 which is nothing but 2 by GM3 if 3 and 4 are identical. Oh please remember now in this transistor the connection was of this kind this is diode connected this is not diode connected. The GMs occur only when VGS and VO is same across that means range is connected to the gate is that correct only then the potential is same this potential is same as this potential is that clear only then that condition is satisfying that the drop across a GM current source has the same voltage drop then only it becomes GM. This is called diode connect only in diode connection the actual output resistance is 1 upon GM. Shunting R is fine but that R0s are so high so it is only 1 upon G. But in a normal this, the, this VGS and VDS are not same na. So they are giving you a R0 only there is no 1 upon GM term because the VDS is not same as VGS. Is that point clear to you? So this issue has to be understood that is why this was called active source uh, active current loads active uh, loads for. Uh, in channel transistors okay is that clear so only t what, what time you should use gms when there is a diode connection okay otherwise no okay otherwise it's a normal transistor with r0 r0 sitting is vds is not same as vgs is that correct same potential drop hai to hi gm you understood na current ye dhyan rakho hamesha ye word kabhi mat bhulna if this is gm some v and this is V, this is equivalent of a V and then this is 1 upon G. You can see now V by 1 upon GM is the current which is GMV, is that correct? So these are only equal when this condition is met otherwise it is not equal. So whenever that, that is the circuit I showed you, no? I connected them and therefore this GM term appears. Now we will do in which case this does not occur and in that case we will remove that GM it will be only ROs is that correct. Why I am showing you parallel because I want to tell you ROs may come or GM may come depending on whichever is smaller among the them okay that may dominate or whichever is higher than them that may dominate is that okay. 
ROD is between the two terminals of VO1 and VO2. एक का रेजिस्टेंस इतना है एक का रेजिस्टेंस इतना है तो नेट टर्मिनल टू द ग्राउंड इज इक्वलेंट ऑफ टू टाइम्स दैट ओके सो द नेक्स्ट व्हिच इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ओके दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सर्किट व्हिच ऑल चिप्स विल बी यूजिंग ओके व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लास्ट वन एंड दिस व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लोड आई एम यूजिंग नो पी इवन देयर आई कैन कुड आई यूज बट व्हाट इज द काइंड ऑफ लोड आई हैव यूज नाउ इट्स कॉल्ड करंट मिरर्स द गेट ऑफ दिस इज कनेक्टेड टू द ड्रेन्स ऑफ दिस is that correct this is called current mirror so whatever current is here depends on the size being equal will be pass on into current in m3 should be equal to current in m4 provided size of m3 same as size of m4 otherwise how much if this is double the size twice the current will flow okay now this current mirrors which is what i have shown you sideways this is a standard current mirror which is equivalently put there now this is is a standard as i say first stage of an op amp this is the first stage of an op amp is that correct this is the first stage of an op amp which is going to be used the next stage is what we call single ended amplifier and that will become two stage op amps okay this you may call one first stage op amp okay then we'll have a two stage op amp and we may have finally have how many third three stage op amp what is third stage will be the buffer do you understand the difference between buffer and a common uh, normal gain stage the buffer normally provides you currents what does it do larger currents is that correct so a buffer ka characteristics hamesha dhyan rakho this is like equivalently saying like this it will either provide current from here from power supply to the load let's say it's a capacity load or it will discharge this capacitor to the ground to the lower one so what does that means at a given time either it will source or it will sink is that correct so that is called the buffer stage is that buffer is word clear the output buffers are always designed for in which either it will source the current or it will sink the current is that correct this is the third stage of an op amp which is the buffer stage okay okay but let op amp come and we'll come to it again okay so this is the first stage which we are looking into now here is something which the real circuit may look like this is your current mirror so the current iss is created from where now please remember what is the difference between last stage and there i applied some potential vgg here to get that current source is that clear in the last case i applied to r5 m5 a supply voltage and i got the current source out of it now i say why do that i may as well use a current source okay uh, current mirror so here is my current which i am creating which i am now transferring to m5 okay keeping what now what i can do tricks i can use different size here and different size here and i can adjust this value by the ratio of these two okay this we already done okay this is your current reference vdd by since these are equal vds and vgs are equal uh, we just calculate and find how much is current here if we know this please remember in this case again vgs 6 and vgs 5 are same therefore the currents in m6 and m5 are same with the size ratios is that clear this is this we did in mirrors okay so this is a biasing circuit what is this called this called the biasing circuit can i replace r also by a transistor sh shunting to the drain i can convert this is a r equivalent of that so i can replace r also by a transistor right now i showed you a resistor but in reality i may have a transistor there okay so i may have a current here which i can fix and i can then mirror it into this whichever value i am looking for one method is actually create same current transfer here as one to one or make any current here take a ratio of these two and push the current of your choice in m5 okay i want say 5 milliamp current i may create one here but keep a ratio of 5 and pass 5 milliamps here is that clear so that's the way we can create the current sources at m5 this is a potential vp 
this is my m1 m2 and v this now few things you should know from here v in 1 minus v in 2 is vid which is nothing but vgs1 minus vgs2 we as usual apply vid by 2 here minus vid by 2 to the other gate we also know vgs1 is equal to vp what is why i am saying it vgs1 is the same as vg i just now said the resistance of ro5 is large enough then and if the two currents go opposite this potential can be treated equal to vss and right now for dc it is minus vss for ac it is how much ground so we say vp is close to the ground is that correct because i am not sure whether they are exactly identical so i may say okay vp is roughly close to the ground or can be treated ground so vg or vgs is same vg and vgs because s is going to the ground so vg or vgs is same so we say vgs1 is vg1 vgs2 is vg2 condition again same as just now i said is that point clear just now i solved the case i say vp can be treated equal to close to the ground okay if that is the equivalence we agree then we calculate this circuit should be kept sideways you, this i am keep using there is a potential node which is essentially vo1 which i am calling as vx for the simplicity okay is that correct why i am not calling it vo1 specifically because i am not picking an output there okay i am only picking an output at this end so i call that node as vx okay is that point clear this is essentially vo1 but this i am calling it because vo1 means i that i am taking an output I am not calling this node VO1 essentially because this VO1 means I am picking an output which I am not. I am only keep finding what is the value of voltage here. Okay. Please remember by making this connection, this is my gate, this is my source. Can you tell me why source are upwards in P channels? Holes must go down, okay. otherwise there will not be possible of same direction currents. So you can see if I connect link like this, this potential which is here, this is shorted, this potential and this potential are same, is that correct? This potential are same, this is what I used. No, because the with this value itself I have calculated the current, you understood? Here I am not treating ground. Here I am treating minus VSS as the value and VDD is this value. So when I calculate reference current, I am using VSS there. So when I am keeping this, they, by making of choice of this which is the gate of this, I am ensuring this VGS is positive enough greater than VT with VSS. That is what I did now when I calculate the current and I assume this transistor in saturation, I am, I am actually forcing the value of resistance such that transistor remains in saturation with that kind of VSS available. If it is ground or this value will change, is that correct? If minus VSS it will change differently, okay. But it will force your both transistors to be in saturation. So what is VGS4 in your circuit? Keep watching that. How much is VGS4? The VS4 which is the source terminal of uh, both the transistor minus Vx ये सोर्स है, Vs4 एंड Vs3 आर सेम। दिस पोटेंशियल माइनस Vx इस द Vgs, इस दैट करेक्ट? वी नो दिस इस ग्राउंडेड फॉर इसी, पर राइट नो एस आई सेड दिस इस Vs पोटेंशियल ऑफ दिस माइनस Vx इस द Vgs सोर्स, तो दिस इस और अदर Vx माइनस दिस इक्वलेंटली सेइंग, ओके Vx minus Vs is Vgs, yeah that is what I wrote. No that is because it is a P channel device, it is a minus potential will appear, okay. okay. So we say Vgs4 is Vs4 minus Vx, okay. We are, oh, you can also call it minus, fair enough, okay. This is Vs3 minus Vs, Vx, 
please remember Vx is the output of first M1 M2 amplifier with M1 receiving Vid by 2. Please check it what I say. VO1 is the output of a diffam at terminal Vx when M1 receives Vid by 2, M2 receives minus Vid by 2. Is that correct? So, we know Vx is nothing but Gm1 Vid by 2 RO1 parallel RO3 and for your case someone was asking now put 1 upon Gm3 here also. Is that correct? If that is so, this is RO13 Gm is sum of this. So, Vx is VO1 minus Gm1 Vid by 2 into this. Since RO13 is normally equal to 1 upon Gm3, so Vx is minus Gm1 by Gm3 times Vid by 2. For one input from the M1 side, the output is Vx is minus G, we did it for common this amplifier earlier, we are just writing the same expressions. So it is Gm1 by Gm3 into Vid by 2 is the Vx, okay. If that is so, can I calculate VGS4 therefore? Okay, so having done this, I calculate VGS4 which is Gm Vid by this. Now I have for these this M2 M4 amplifier, you look at this I am talking. The VO is decided by how, how many inputs? Ye bhi AC hai yahan par. Ye bhi AC hai yahan par. M4 is also an input, has an input and M2 also has an input. So the output voltage by superposition we will say is the available because of this plus available because of this. Please remember there is a signal coming at the input of M4, VGS4 is a small signal which is coming as an input there. There is an input anyway here, is that correct? So this potential is not only governed by M4 inputs but also by or not only governed by M2 inputs but also by M4 inputs, is that clear to you? Since this value in this case is signal available to you, small VGS4 or VGS3 is available to you, this acts like an input to M4, so it will also amplify. This in, this is a given so input anyway by us, so it will also amplify, is that correct? The sum total will be the net VO value for you occurring because of M2 and M4 pe bhi input hai aur M2 may pe bhi AC inputs hai, dono milke output denge ab. Or the only thing is since transistors are assumed in saturation, we say where signals are small enough, then what is the condition I am satisfying? Linearity, superposition theorem is only valid if it is in linearity. So our assumption is because of the condition I enforced, both systems are in linear mode. Therefore, superposition is possible. Please, is that point clear to you? Superposition is only and only valid if system is linear and please take it, I repeatedly tell you which is the question I have been asking in here. Y is equal to mx plus 3 is a line, so life looks like linear but the system is non-linear, okay. This fact has to be appreciated in whole of the life of electrical engineers, okay. This is a AC signal which is connected here. Output of M1 coming at here is connected direct to the gate of M4. Is that correct? So current mirror kiya na apne. So connect kar diya. So maha jo in yaha par jo output hai wo iska input ho gaya. Iske karan hi to iska gain bad raha hai baba. Is that correct? Is do tarah se mein output pe le jara hoon apko. Ek yaha se la raha hoon aur ek. Okay, so all that I did, I solved these problems, I calculate VO due to VGS4, VO due to minus VID by 2. I also assume all transistors like GM1 is equal to GM2, that is M1, M2 are identical and M3, M4s are also identical. 
but m1 m3 and m2 m4 are not identical only pairs are identical m1 m2 identical m3 m4 identical gm3 is gm4 ro3 is ro4 i solve this problem that i you only see this is the line i said vo vgs four vo v minus ye do signal ka sum karna hai output par is that clear the next is this so vo this is due to vgs four do you know what why this is vgs four isko vgs four ko vid ke term mein jo expression nikala wo maine isme substitute kar diya okay this is due to vid by q into ye ro two four kya hai what is the output resistance at v0 the output resistance of 2 m2 parallel to the output resistance of 4 and there is no gm terms appearing here because it's not diode connected whenever diode connection make it gms 1 upon gm if no diode connection it is only ro is that correct so if that is uh, as i say ros will get cancelled simply because not necessarily removed if that numbers are let, let's say ro is not very high in which case parallel combination must be taken care but as i told you gms will be order of minus 2 minus 3 amp per volt okay where ros will be order of minus 6 minus 7 per ohm per uh, current per this so essentially we are saying that ros are much larger than 1 upon gms and therefore 1 upon gm is a good approximation in most cases but i have never written directly i first show you parallel combination and then i say if this is larger i can use that term so in real life calculation wise never leave terms numerically they will get eliminated 1 upon 1000 plus 1 upon 5 do whatever you it is a point to only okay so that number will automatically get eliminated you need not do anything you solve parallel combination the other terms will be small enough to be used in the expressions is that but if you are sure and you can write there is nothing wrong these are too high compared to i use this that's what electrical engineers are all about okay okay what is the output resistance of this stage so avdd is vo by vid gm1 upon go2 plus isko sabko sort sort karoge to ye aa jayega ye bada expression dekho kya dikha raha hai ye what is the upper terms are talking about what is this upper term is because of gm1 of m1 which is same as gm2 is that correct gm1 is decided by what factors please look at it what factor gm1 is decided beta dash which is a given technology the size ratio w by l into the bias current iss where from this is fixed from the mirror side which i am fixing what is r go to go4 is lambda 2 plus lambda 4 into iss by 2 i can take iss above now okay and i do so one thing very interesting is happening and that's why i have shown you this expression i'll come back to it this expression please note down this is relevant expression in our difference gain value beta n dash w by l1 divided by iss upon lambda 2 plus lambda 4 they are equal than 2 lambda okay then this two will also be oh i just now showed you and uh, okay the output resistance seen at this terminal is because of this this is ro2 and this is ro4 so is terminal par do resistance parallel mein hai na so ro24 is a parallel combination of ro2 and ro4 did you see gm term there no why because it's not diode connection it's an open ended blocks okay so i calculate this term i calculate the output resistance r0 which is ro2 parallel ro4 then i see very interesting two functions the difference gain is proportional to w by l of m1 or m2 they are equal 
एम वन ट्रांजिस्टर इज आइडेंटिकल टू एम टू डिफेम के जो ड्राइवर्स हैं उसका साइज सेम होगा तो उनका साइज क्या होगा लार्जर द डब्ल्यू बाय एल लार्जर इज द गेन इज दैट करेक्ट लार्जर इज द साइज लार्जर इज द गेन बट वन इंटरेस्टिंग फीचर आई एम सींग दिस डिफरेंस गेन इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू रूट ऑफ आई एस एस वट इज इट ट्राइंग टू से दैट इज इफ यू वर्क एट स्मॉलर करंट योर गेन्स आर हायर विच इज वेरी वेरी टिपिकल ना नॉर्मली वट डू वी से पम्प द पावर एंड गेट द गेन इट इज नाउ ट्राइंग टू टेल मी दैट रिड्यूस द बायस करंट ओके इफ यू रिड्यूस द बायस करंट डिफरेंशियल गेन इज हायर ओके हाउ एवर एंड दे आर ऑल्सो यूनिवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू वैल्यूज ऑफ वन अपॉन सॉरी वन अपॉन लैमडाज ऑफ एम टू एंड एम फोर If you see your R zero, which is one upon lambda two by lambda four, this. So if you see R R O two four value, it is one upon G O two plus G O four, which is one upon lambda two plus lambda four into I S S. So the output resistance is inversely proportional to I S S. So if you reduce I S S, output resistance increases. If you reduce I S S, your gain increases. so why not always keep small currents power dissipation is lower isliye maine bataya ki when i go for opam this is the place where i'll come back to you so no if i reduce ises i may lose something this condition is valid what i have shown you is a valid statement there is nothing great great thing going wrong okay is that correct then why are people do not want much smaller currents the net output resistance of defam do you want higher or lower i have not stated so far is that correct defam ka ro kitna hona chahiye ye next stage batane wala hai aapko hmm? aur yahi iska fallacy hai ki you cannot decide arbitrarily like this because you don't know what load you are connecting is that correct that is why too much smaller currents or too higher currents both may actually hurt you very strongly is that clear now no nee, but this is not the only reason there is a major reason which we will see later abhi ek maine parso ke din figure nikala tha aapke liye opam ka opam ka jo output rehta hai wo ek capacitive load pe drive karta rehta hai is capacitor ko charge karne ka current kitna hoga cl dv0 by dt and this should be supplied by the buffer currents either source or sink aur ye source sink current kahan se aa rahe hain ye wo iss ke same layer ho ke aa rahe hain hmm? so iska matlab yadi ye iss se related hain so what does this essentially will tell if iss is smaller the time taken to charge or discharge this capacitor will be larger or smaller longer time smaller current will charge or discharge the capacitor slower is that correct this term dv0 by dt is called slew rate dv output charging to high or low is called dv0 by dt is called slew rate and that is decided by iss by cl so if you want larger slew rates which you will require for high speed performance in connections then you must have larger currents but if you have a larger current your defam stage will have lower gains is that correct so ye cheez jo maine abhi tak nahi bataya opam ki ki jo last stage connect hona hai that may finally tell me how much iss i'll be allowed because someone will specify you Is that point clear? What is one specification OPAM gives? Slew rate. It has five volt per microsecond. That's the slew rate they will say. Okay. Now to meet this slew rate for the given load, I know how much ISS I will require, and that's the ISL I'll have to use back so that I can use a good defense. So ISS is not very much in my hand, which I showed you as if I can vary ISS, adjust powers. ऐसा नहीं है एक को हाथ करेंगे दूसरा निकल जाएगा दूसरों का ये निकल जाएगा तो ओपैम डिजाइन करते समय सौ चीजों का ध्यान रखना है तीसरी एक और टर्म है उसमें जो मैंने नहीं बोली 
ICMR input common mode range and output common output swings also are functions of ISS is that correct. So for a given OPAM how much is the output swing possible, how much is the ICMR given to you, what is the slew rate you are looking for that all together will decide and power dissipation will decide how much is your ISS and therefore how much is the gain is that correct. So it is not independent of everything. If I say I want larger gain slew rate margin or I should have very low loads but if you have very low loads then and say who are you to decide outside. Okay. So essentially design of an OPAM does not just say ISS come kar do ya jara kar do ni 4, 5 term, uh, parameters you have to keep adjusting so that roughly you get where you are expected to reach in the parameters. This is what the design is all. So is that clear why I am uh, teaching you something more on the design side because at the end of the day we are not going to use analysis everywhere, we are going to design shapes or design component, design parts. So as a designer I must know where I am constrained okay. And analysis what does it give? It gives me constraint. Either kya hoga, udhar kya hoga, udhar kya. Then I know I, I know analysis, I know this changes this, this changes this. So if you want this please give me this. If you want this, please give me here, okay. So this is what designers do. Okay. So at the end of your course, if you learn this that electrical engineers are not going to be just using the component, they are the ones who are going to design systems, okay. As a designers, we must know my constraints and if those constraints have to be met, analytically I must know what changes what, okay. The whole course is therefore slightly change from last so many years is more towards design values because second year say aapke dimaag mein we want to push you that you are going to be designers in life okay. Even in banks you will be making some portfolios or some, you will design something okay. So at the end of the day engineers design something okay. okay. It does, there is a limit coming, maximum minimum is also fixed but within that range also how much? lower side or higher side, your viewpoint is correct. If too much or too less I may get out of saturation or go to cut off but assuming there is a sufficient range in which I will still remain in saturation. So usme bhi lower lu to I am seeing something, usme higher lu to I see something okay. So during designs this condition which you said is always true, saturation to kisi halat mein ho nahi, everything else is after. If device comes out of saturation you are in a non-linear zones okay. So we are not going there is that correct. So this point is well taken but there is a still values lower side and upper side where to work okay. As an analysis I do not care na jo value mene diya nikala wo output kuch to value aai jayega 8 volt by ek amp aagaya to bhi mein gain kya ho thik hai yaar 8 volt by volt aagaya thik hai 8 hi gain hai. But 8 gain ka amplifier karke kya karo ma mein, 10 se 8 ka. So I have to know I must have 10 to power 3, 1000 or 500 gain chahiye mujhe. So all these values, analytically I damn care what value I, I substitute in formula and whatever I get, sir this is the raw, aapne galat data diya, thik hai. But in design, I will be given specs, this is what I have to meet. So I am trying to give you some ideas, how do I think, I, I means I do not mean, I, a designer thinks. He knows analysis 100 percent therefore we teach you analysis. From there I know each how it connects okay and then given me final this is dabbe mein hi rehna hai. To kya karna hai? Then I adjust okay isko tweak karta hoon to ye jata hai. Achha isko thoda karta hoon. Aisa kar karke we adjust the parameters. Is that clear? So this is a issue which I thought I must ham hammer on you okay. So please remember designs are part and parcels of all electrical engineering for that matter engineering but more so for electrical. Okay, so this finishes the amplifier part which uh, amplifier we did. This is a defined with what kind of loads current mirror loads. The first case we did active load with diode connection but there is a third one also current sources itself that circuit I will not solve you solve which one the first circuit which I showed you first time 
अच्छा इसमें यदि ये करंट सोर्सेस है एम थ्री एम फोर तो इनके रेजिस्टेंसेस कितने हो गए कितना होगा इसमें जीएम आएगा कि नहीं आएगा नहीं आएगा इस ये इक्वलेंट आर है ये इक्वलेंट आर है इजीएस्ट वे टू सॉल्व इज दिस सर्किट इज दैट करेक्ट दिस इज आर ओ थ्री दिस इज आर ओ फोर सो इट इज वेरी वेरी इजी टू सॉल्व ए करंट सोर्स लोड इज दैट पॉइंट क्लियर इफ दिस इज सिंपल रेजिस्टर्स then we already solved that diffam case with simple two resistors so this is a case only advantage is this will have very large resistance is a good current source means output resistance is how much for that so ro must be very high 10 to the power 6 or 7 for that because you know there is no gm term will appear here because vgs is not same as vgs there is no diode connection going on that means the voltage drop is not same across the current source as the gm times that Okay. If they are same, then it is equivalent of a resistor. But otherwise, R O is always there of the transistor. If कर रहे हैं तो R O तो है ही आपके पास. So this is equivalent of a R O here, equivalent of a R O here. Okay, just solve it. Okay, and you will get the gains for this also. Okay, so this finishes diffam as such. Before we quit, I will not solve fully, but just show you what how quickly we solve this. We have been telling as if the mass diffams are only going to be used, but in real life, which op-amps are still on bipolar? Seven four one, okay. No, seven four one C B is market. Me, and today C B is attacked. They are seven four one. They are selling. So there are mass op-amps seven four one. Again, is seven four one bipolar op-amp will be better than mass op-amp or not? Is bipolar systems for an amplifier are superior to mass systems or not? Okay, basic idea is GM. Is GM is better in bipolar for everything similar compared to mass? Yes. So bipolar amplifiers will be superior to mass amplifier any day in fact but what is the cost i'll pay for power qic by kt kar rahe the to ic bada hi rahe the aap okay gm bada rahe the na to wo actually aapne ic bada ke aaya because beta 100 se zyada hai i bhi micro mein rakhenge to bhi milliamps se zyada ic leke ja rahe okay which means at the cost of power bipolar then we say why not use the same technique in a mos and use uh, large powers what is the problem because independently if i am using i may do that but the power supply limitation may be increasing beyond 1.5 it may go to 5 volt 10 volt which no mos transistor gates can sustain what is the problem if the gate gets larger voltage breakdown if the electric field is larger than the critical field the mos upside may break down so i cannot just arbitrarily increase bdd is that correct so they will have to work at smaller voltages and for those the currents will be smaller and therefore gms will be always smaller than bipolars for similar things only thing advantage i'll get is low power since the chips are going to have low power dissipations we will prefer mos circuits on any silicon chips okay is that point clear why silicon chips are always presently mos simply because of power requirements otherwise you give me huge heat sinks big silicon area i may use bipolar circuit as much and do better performance okay okay isme usme kya farak nazar aa raha hai aapko isme ek hai ki usme vgs tha isme kya hoga ib ho Is that correct? उसमें VGS था ये current driven circuits है वो voltage driven circuits है तो इसमें सब जगह currents use करेंगे आप IB1, IB2, however actual inputs will be voltages V in one and V in two. Okay, difference is still VID by two. Okay, VID required minus same method करेंगे यहाँ भी current source है IE उसके across एक resistance है REE ये emitter है इसमें हमने जो इक्वलेंट सर्किट हम बनाएंगे उसमें एक आर रेजिस्टेंस बोला था हमने आर स्मॉल आर या आर जिसे कहते हैं 
emitter to substrate that is normally used in many books but that is around less than 10 ohms or 5 ohms okay in actual calculations so if you do not use that it is much easier to solve otherwise rs plus bar bar ya aega aur ye 10 ohm aur 1 mega ohm aisa bar bar rakhte jana padega isliye main bata raha hu ki mere circuit mein main uske use nahi karta but aap books dekhenge so you will find they will use this term because they are actually solving full circuit so they will show you the rs part a uh, small resistance which i showed you between substrate and emitter will be shown to you there so circuit will have this resistance here plus this resistance here so the emitter will see small resistance due to the emitter substrate this plus re so mere isme maine bol resistance show which resistance i normally neglect in analog rc rb rb dash and rs or re they may be used in case you want accurate analysis in analytical mein main sochta hu bahut minor rehte hain जब आप स्पाइस पे सॉल्व करेंगे तो वो ऑटोमेटिकली बिल्ट इन आएंगे सो यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक दे विल कम देयर इन मॉडल ओके सो दे विल टेक केयर ऑफ देमसेल्व्स ओके यू डोंट हैव टू वरी ऑन दैट ओके सिंस यू आर डूइंग न्यूमेरिकली आपने को तो अंदर क्या हो रहा है पता नहीं ना हमको ये पता है कि आई इज जी वी वी आर ऑल द टाइम सॉल्विंग ए करंट मैट्रिक्स फॉर ए गिवन वोल्टेज मैट्रिक्स विद गिवन कंडक्टेंस मैट्रिक्स नोट्स के ऊपर हम ये कैलकुलेट कर तो हमको कुछ भी मॉडल दे वो अंदर से लेता है लो ना हमको क्या तकलीफ हम तो सिर्फ देख रहे हैं कि कब आउटपुट आता है दैट्स व्हाट स्पाइस इज यू मस्ट हैव सीन यू जस्ट गिव एन इनपुट फाइल एंड होप फॉर द बेस्ट इट मे नॉट बी द बेस्ट अनफॉर्चुनेटली दैट इज वेयर द प्रॉब्लम ओके सी यू देन